Hello and welcome, you're watching the GB Times Third Angle Insight, I'm Jenny Hammond. The territorial row between China and Japan over the group of eight uninhabited islands known as the Daiyu Islands in China and the Senkaku Islands in Japan is nothing new and has been straining ties between China and Japan for many years. But what is at the centre of the dispute? Is it purely territorial or is there more to the story? Sixteen years after the first group of Hong Kong activists tried to land on the disputed islands, last week on what was the 67th anniversary of the end of World War II, they successfully completed their mission when a Chinese flag was planted on the Daiyu Senkaku Islands, sparking a sensation across the greater China region and stirring huge patriotic sentiment. However, just a few days later, 150 Japanese activists tried to land on the same islands and what they said was to commemorate World War II deaths, although the Chinese activists saw it as a retaliation tactic. When they failed, nine swam to the rocks and planted their national flag, according to Japanese media, sparking anti-Japanese protests in many cities throughout China. These episodes highlight the first territorial row over the islands that are said to lie near potentially rich gas reserves. But what are the two nations' territorial claims? China says that the Daoyu Islands have been part of the territory since ancient times, serving as important fishing grounds administered by the province of Taiwan. The history of the Diaoyu Islands dates back to the reign of Chinese Emperor Yongle during the Ming Dynasty, year 1402 in the Common Era, where it was already marked then in a nautical chart entitled Shun Feng Xian Song that the Diaoyu Islands belong to China. According to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, this is fully proven by history and is legally well founded. Japan, on the other hand, says that it surveyed the islands for 10 years and determined that they were uninhabited, so in 1895 it erected a sovereignty marker and formally incorporated the islands into Japanese territory. The confusion, however, seems to stem from 1894, when China lost the first Sino-Japanese war and had to relinquish control over Taiwan and all affiliated islands. But then, after World War II, when Japan surrendered unconditionally and renounced claims to a number of territories and islands, including Taiwan, in the 1951 Treaty of San Francisco. Under the treaty, the islands came under U.S. trusteeship and were returned to Japan in 1971. Japan says that China raised no objections then and only since the 1970s when the issue of all resources in the area emerged that Chinese and Taiwanese authorities began pressing their claims. The fundamental root cause of the Diaoyu island dispute was a U.S. scheme implemented after World War II. In a number of international treaties, the U.S. proclaimed that Japan's territory should be restricted to its four main islands. But history has proved that the U.S. swallowed its promise and played a very negative role in the issue. The U.S. handed over the jurisdiction of the Ryukyu Islands to Japan and even gave over the Diaoyu Islands, an inherent part of China's territory, to Japan. The Japanese greed for overseas territory has never changed. Thus, Japan will firmly seize the chance once it is offered to gain territory. However, the contested islands are said to be surrounded by rich fishing grounds and potentially large natural gas deposits. So, is this the reason the two nations are fighting so hard for sovereignty? This is from the point of view of economic considerations. But the political considerations and grassroots reactions are more significant. After the establishment of New China, Chinese people put great emphasis on the integrity of sovereignty and national pride. Economic considerations are only secondary, while priority is given to politics and national sovereignty. So I believe that anyone from any part of the world must understand the adherence to this principle on the part of a Chinese person. This is extremely important. The Chinese sentiment and emotion attached to the island dispute is huge. This was highlighted last week when Hong Kong activists planted a Chinese flag on the islands before being arrested by Japanese police. We think this mission was highly successful. It was not only an honour for us as Hong Kong citizens, but also united all Chinese people from around the world. The response drawn from the mainland was overwhelming, including the Chinese government. 
There was also a great response from Taiwan and other overseas Chinese. We are able to create a unifying force among all Chinese people in the world, and we are very satisfied with this. Netizens have also been talking about this topic and have many different perspectives. One posted on Yahoo. At the end of the day, this is all about money, since there are natural resources on the island. Do your own research and don't be fooled by propaganda. You're protesting for the wrong reason. This isn't about pride of the country, it's about money. Another posted. The Chinese government's Daiyu Island policy is so-called shelving the sovereignty dispute and developing the area jointly, which is no more than wishful thinking. Japan has actually controlled the islands for many years, and if that continues, Japan should be justifiably possess the islands. The dispute over the islands is seen as a time bomb giving the powerful sentiment involved from the two rival countries, and something that needs to be resolved. However, despite the Japanese claims that the Chinese interest in the islands is guided primarily by the possibility of valuable oil deposits, from the support from its Chinese citizens and activists show that the islands have a patriotic value far above that of any potential business value and represents deep historical scars. Japan's intransigent position on atrocities committed during the Second World War helps to fuel Chinese sentiment, and perhaps returning to the islands to China would finally close that chapter of history and help the two nations move forward in a more positive way. Well, now it's your turn to join the dialogue, so please email your comments to feedback at gbtimes.com and you can also leave them on our website at www.gbtimes.com. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.